to the visual effects supervisor of Doctor Strange, Stefan Soretti. And the moderator of tonight's special Q&A, the CEO and founder of Digital LA, Kevin Winston. Awesome. Thank you so much, Levi. Let's give it up for the Chinese Theater. So, wow, where'd you guys get the film? Amazing, amazing. So uh, I saw it last night right here. It was so amazing. I had to come and see it again uh, and on an opening Friday. It was such an amazing film. The, the fans love it. We are now in the dark dimension. No, just kidding. Whoa. Uh, so everyone. I think I'm going to stand over here. We have live dance. So it's, it's been such an amazing uh, film. We wanted to bring someone who who now it's not the story. We wanted to <laughs> hello, hello. There we go. All right. So we're so excited that that, that uh, we're able to have the Marvel Digital Effects Supervisor for the film, Stefan Cerretti. Uh, you may have seen some of his other films, including Guardians of the Galaxy. Who saw Guardians? Who likes Guardians? So yeah, Stephanie was the visual effects supervisor for Guardians of the Galaxy, which uh, is also right here. Uh, he did some of the films which you may have heard of, including X-Men First Class, Captain America, The First Avenger. He also worked on the Matrix films, which you may have, you may have heard of or seen, and, uh, and, and several others. So uh, let's go ahead and I uh, wanted to bring something to do a quick Q&A. Uh, I run Digital LA, we organize every event all around town to basically increase uh, awareness of what's happening in tech and the tech community, including visual effects. It's the visual effects that really make a lot of these movies uh, pop. Uh, if you look at the top 10 movies over the course of any year, at least eight or nine of them are visual effects driven. So we want to basically you know, show, what's, show the spotlight on the folks who do the visual effects and make it all happen. So uh, we have a short uh, Q&A. Uh, I'll ask a couple of questions, and we'll come up to the audience. How does that sound? All right, cool. So, Stefan, you... This, I hope I can get over here without feedback. So, uh, this film has been amazing. Uh, everyone, the, the critics have been raving about the visual effects of this film, making it really pop and just taking us to other worlds. We went to six different worlds just now over the past two hours, including, you know, uh, New York, Everest, and even the Dark Dimension. Um, how do you get these ideas for what to create, or how do you work with the director on making it? Do they say, do some cool stuff, or make it really awesome? Like, how, how do they give you direction, and then what do well, you do with that? I mean, it starts in the script, right? So we, we started the film two years ago, um, in September 2014, and uh, Scott Derrickson, the director, already came in with ideas and visuals, and the script was kind of in the writing process. Um, we had um, Charlie Wood, the production designer, coming at the same time, and Charlie and me and Scott, we stayed in a room for two, three weeks together, <laughs> trying to find ideas and working on the script, and we kind of had that feedback loop between the script and the visuals, and always trying to have the visuals uh, go from the script, and also the script sometimes go from the visuals. We knew we had all these sequences, you know, all these worlds that we have to create, so we looked at every references that we could and trying to make sense of what the story was supposed to be and balance the VFX and the story together. Um, it's, um, you know, we looked at Escher, um, optical illusions, all, all these kind of things and tried to make it more modern. Also we had a very good base from the comics. Uh, Steve Deed co-created all these, uh, these panels in the 60s and 70s, all the psychedelic stuff that you see. Steve Ditko! Yeah. For the fans. Yeah. Um, so we looked at that and we tried to make a modern version of that. So uh, once you come up with some ideas, do you show them to the director and he looks at them and gives yeah, well, feedback? We work, we work together all the time. Okay. We're in the same so it's room. It's very fluid. So you absolutely, and it's all you know. It, it took us a lot of time to do the R and D on the film. We had about a year before we started to shoot. We actually started to shoot exactly a year ago today. We were in Kathmandu a year ago uh, on November fourth. Um, so uh, yeah, less than a year. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, shooting and posting. So, uh, but we had we had a fair amount of time at the beginning to do all the R&D, which was very necessary because the film has so much stuff that we had to figure out before shooting. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Now, now, also, uh, we were in the IMAX theater here uh, at the Chinese Series, which was just renovated uh, a couple of years ago. They lowered this. Uh, this, this floor to make it larger. Uh, this is actually one of the largest capacity uh, IMAX theaters, um, and an hour of this film is in the IMAX yes. format. Uh, how did that affect uh, your creation of? Well, I mean, what we we made a deal with IMAX at the very beginning. We knew we wanted to use the, the you know new cameras from Arri, the Arri 65, which has which are uh, wide format cameras. They're they're a very different style of camera than the one we use we usually use. Um, they also have a much higher resolution, so uh, we use that for the film. Uh, for all of the film has been shot with these cameras, but we do that for the action sequences and all the trippy stuff. We wanted to have not only a better resolution, uh, a better quality of the image, but also a wider format uh, that we uh, worked on for for the IMAX. So I don't know if you've noticed it, but during some of these sequences, the, the images kind of became bigger, um, and you had a bit more at the top and bottom. I don't know if you, did you see that. <laughs> Yes. I saw it last night. I didn't notice because I was so like in these worlds. I didn't even notice yeah. the screen. Well, we anyway. tried to transition it in a you know in a way where it doesn't bump too much, uh, but we also make it more you know like the sequence that is called the magic mystery tour when Tilda pushes him out of his body and he goes into space and everything is is one example where we just open up and, and go a little bit more crazy in IMAX. So it's uh, it's good to see it that way. That's awesome. What was uh, one of the trickiest or most more challenging scenes, or the one where you, once you did it, you were like, ah, I got it? Ah, uh, everything was challenging. <laughs> Especially the amount of time we had. We only had five, five and a half months to, uh, to do post. Right. Because uh, we finished shooting in, uh, I would say, mid March. Um, and then we did some reshoots afterwards. Uh, but um, the time was the challenge. I wish I had, um, you know, <laughs> the time rules so we could stop time or reverse sometimes. But, uh, we all got time. Uh, but it was, it was difficult. Everything was difficult. New York was difficult because it was such huge scale. Um, the Magic Mystery Tour was difficult because it was so conceptually bizarre. Um, and then uh, Hong Kong was difficult because it was difficult to shoot. We spent 20, 23 nights uh, wow. shooting that in, in London, uh, in the street that we had built. Um, and that was pretty difficult to shoot, actually, uh, for many technical reasons. But, uh, yeah. So how many other studios did you work with as a visual effects supervisor? You had to coordinate the shots from multiple studios? Yeah, well, we have, uh, I'm working for Marvel, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of driving all the visual effects studios around the world that work on the film. So we, um, we had initially four big visual effects studios, uh, ILM, Method, Luma, and ILM, Firmstone. Okay. ILM, yeah, ILM, and Luma. Luma's, Luma's based, Luma's based, based here, right? Luma's based in Santa Monica, uh, okay. Method as well. They have places in Vancouver. Uh, ILM is all over the world. Um, okay. We've got people in, in Australia, we've got people in New Zealand, we've got people everywhere in Berlin. Um, so yeah, we keep working around the clock to get it done. Okay. The time we yeah, that's how you do it, everyone's working yeah, and all the time around the clock. <laughs> so, so, very tired. so after working on it so, so intensely uh, yeah. over the course of the past uh, year or so, what was it like coming to the premiere, which was right here uh, a couple of weeks ago? Sorry, what, was, what was it like to see it, oh, see your work on the premiere, you know, on this big screen right here with your family, with the audience after working on it so well, much? It was cool, but when, I mean, I must have seen it about 200 times already. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, I can't be completely, you know, process it, but uh, it, you know, it felt good because it was the first time we saw it with an audience that had not really completely worked on it or had not seen it, so getting the reaction you know, was pretty interesting. And I actually came here, I, I stayed in the back and tried to see how people reacted and it felt like you reacted in all the right places, so that's nice. <laughs> good job, everybody. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, questions? An amazing film. Let's open up the questions. Who has questions? I'm going to try to see people raise their hands. All right. And, uh, I can see it. Levitation keyboards, love that. Right. So, um, let's see. so um, for the visual effects, uh, what were some of the? You know, I knew that something, uh, something where uh, Doctor Strange goes through the, the the mind of the, the ancient one. Yeah. What are some of the? Uh, were Were there any film exam, uh, film influences like uh, 2001: a Space Odyssey per se? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, you know, we, when we do films nowadays, we always look at the past. Um, obviously, Scott Derrickson is a huge uh, 
um, the director is a huge fan of films, movies, story, and everything. So we look at everything and we try to pay homage to other things that we really like. Obviously, there's some clear references to 2001 in there and to other things. But we try to make it our own and move forward and, and create a story that works with the homage. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, with the job, I'll finish wrapping up uh, with the uh, VFX work. And typically, uh, in the VFX, in the, uh, um, how much like buffer time do you need in order to like fit it on the like, movie? Uh, it's it's always very tight. I mean, we try to fit, finish as late as possible. <laughs> Uh, because we always try to polish it, polish it, polish it. Uh, we, we, have, we have very little time on this one, so it was really hard. Um, especially for the 3D conversion guys, because they were converting the film as we were doing the effects. Uh, sometimes converting 10 versions and then coming back to the new versions. And we update constantly the stuff. Uh, it's, a, it's a very grueling process, and at the end it's a, it's a lot of hours. Uh, but we actually finished the 3D IMAX version that you have seen tonight, I think, was finished, completely finished, and you see uh, quality controlled last week. So, um, yes, I mean, that's, the press. that's digital, you know, we can do that because we have digital release, but um, we finished the international version three weeks ago, uh, because it needs to go to all the territories, but we, we constantly update everything. That, that version that you see is the cleanest, nicest, best version that will ever exist in the film. So, uh, Thank you. Okay. All right, one more question here. So, um, uh, you had a lot of visuals and a lot of crazy scenes and that like blew my mind and probably like, a lot of other people here too. But I was wondering, were there some like scenes or acts that you guys created or came up with where you're just like, well, that's too much. We shouldn't do that. Or were you just like open with like kind of everything? Yeah, I mean, well, we, we there's a lot of stuff that has gone away from the from the film, from the from some of the versions of the film, um, mostly because of the, the the flow of the film. And you know, when you edit the film, there's stuff that you think was working that doesn't work for many reasons, um, and that always happens. So we we kind of let go of some of the chase elements in New York and other things. There's tons of things that went away. Um, now in terms of the effects, um, if you look at the astral projection, for example, um, it's an interesting thing because we, we have that scene of them on the balcony and it's a scene that is very emotional and you have the two actors and they're great actors. And the last thing we wanted to do was distract the audience from looking at the actors and how good they are and how, you know, how they tell the story. So we went through a lot of versions of the astral projection, some versions that were really crazy in terms of the look and the effects, and very heavy in terms of effects. And the more we went into it and the more we played around, we wanted to protect that scene and that moment between the two of them. So that's why the astral projection is kind of a more simple effect than it initially was when we started working on it. Um, and that's a good example of the VFX going away, you know, trying to just back down and just say, okay, we're not gonna shine on that, just going to do something very nice and simple and beautiful, but we're not going to take over the action, the action, the acting, and the emotion of the scenes. And um, so that's you know that's the kind of decisions we make. You know, we balance the effects and the story to try and make the best out of the two we know. Uh, so it's things like that. Last question, okay? Um, amazing the the rotating of the repeating structures of the classical architecture. Yeah. What was the moment where you guys were like, oh my gosh, all these repetitions in English architecture, we could twist them endlessly. What, what, can you tell me about that moment? And also, was it slightly inspired by psychedelics? Oh, totally inspired by psychedelics. I mean, that's mostly what we looked at. Uh, looked at uh, and uh, I mean, we, you know, it's. It, it reminds me of things that I was doing when I was a kid, you know, the spirograph thing. I don't know if some of you knew, know about that. You know, you had these little pens yeah. and you were doing kind of rounds and suddenly these things were becoming crazy and geometrical. Uh, so it's these kind of things that we looked at. And uh, the, the funny thing about the film is that even though we came into the film all having some ideas and some, you know, some concept of what we wanted to do, Everybody from the top of the studio, from Kevin Feige to, uh, to the producers to us, you know, in, in VFX, 
and all the way down to the artists in the companies, everybody tried to get some ideas out. Everybody was super excited about it. So there's lots of ideas that came from the top, from, from the side, from, from all these artists working on the, on the shots and just giving us ideas. So ILM, for example, did a lot of stuff in New York and they created all these spirals of, of buildings and stuff like that. And we were like, wow, that's pretty cool. And we started to play more with it. And, and we started to have more of it in, in the film. It, it's, a, it's a creative process. And uh, whatever you think about big studios and stuff like that, at Marvel, it's a very creative process. And we're all in the same room every day, talking about things, arguing about things, uh, moving the movie forward, uh, and just trying to get the best out of everybody's mind. So uh, it's, it's very fun, actually, to do. It's very grueling and very tiring, but it's yeah, very exciting at the same time. Awesome. Well, it's, 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 it's psychedelic, we didn't smoke it. <laughs> well. Awesome. Well, uh, to totally amazing. Uh, we actually, I'd love to talk, talk you know, about half an hour, but we have to wrap it up because of the screening of the, yes. of the show. So, thank you so much for giving out the visuals for this. Uh, it's an amazing film. It's really amazing. Get up for Seth and Serenity! Thanks for coming to see it.